our judges and stewards, Commissioner Stan Norrie, come forward, please. We're always eager to hear what Stan has to say. Thank you, Stan. Mm -hmm. I can tell you you're infinitely more popular than, Rod, you know, the NFL situation today. We're glad to see you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, possibly. I'll try to be, to be brief. Uh, right now we have 272 judges uh, for a total. We have 156 national regional judges, 67 large R judges, and 49 small R judges. We also have 102 stewards. And just to touch on the steward base just a little bit, and I said before in the last two years, um, we're still dropping with stewards. If you have any uh, inclination in, of not being a judge, but possibly wanting to be in the steward process, please talk to Pat or I <clears throat> or contact uh, USCF. It's extremely important. It's a a uh, fulfilling job, and I need them desperately out there because our, quite frankly, the stewards' base is aging out. Uh, we need to have them come up through there. Um, at Youth Nationals this year, and I'll just touch on <clears throat> the Nationals just a bit. Youth Nationals this year, again, the uh, judges that are from other breeds are constantly amazed at the high degree of horsemanship that are exhibited by our uh, youth at Youth Nationals. I'm always amazed at what those kids can ride. I started at the first Youth Nationals showing there and it's, it's continually gone up every year. <clears throat> Canadian Nationals, always a well-run show. And I said it in another forum the other day. The numbers at Canadian Nationals are usually around 700 to 800. And historically, those horses, uh, you have to be horseback there, and most horsemen understand that. The depth in those classes, they, uh, the, the Canadian National Show Commission, I can't speak enough of to try to bring that along as far as the expertise that are there. They try to make us, the whole town turns out for that. It's a uh, unique place to show, and that doesn't mean it's a bad place to show. I think it's a great place to show. So I would in invite you to try to attend the Canadian Nationals. Sport Horse Nationals. It can be one of the most trying shows for me because of other breed and other breed disciplines that are there. But the positive parts of the Sport Horse Nationals is something this breed needs to embrace, and I think they have in a lot of different areas. But folks, this thing is growing. More and more people are doing this. And our expertise, the way we present our horses at the Sport Horse Nationals to other breeds, has come up exponentially through this. Um, I can't, they, they talk to me all the time about different judges that show there and the different judges that judge there about the way that the Arabian horse has changed all the way through the sport horse uh, program. So my kadoos to them as far as the way we were, we're doing that, it is a growing part of our industry and we'll continue to do that. U.S. Nationals. This year, uh, and I'm, uh, I'll go off, Pat was always scared of this for me. She said, you're going to go off script. I know you're going to go off script. <laughs> <clears throat> so, but I'll just, I'll speak on U.S. Nationals a little bit. This year I tried something a little bit different with a rotational judge system that I felt like that we could, we could do in the main ring. And I say main ring because I, I don't want to, to disregard any other ring, but that's just main ring as a term. I'm not saying that, that, that it's better than any other discipline. But this year, when the Hunter Pleasure, the English Pleasure, the Western Pleasure, I tried to do a rotation with judges. The fact of the matter is, is that I, uh, it wasn't a cost-cutting motive by AHA. We, that, wasn't, that didn't have anything to do with it. I felt like that it broadened my pool out. It put people in that had judged all year long or years past that had judged Western horses, that had judged English horses, that had judged Hunter horses. I felt like it was going to be a fresh look for a lot of different people, for exhibitors to be able to show in different areas. I think it worked very well. Are there some tweaks that I want to make to it? Yes, there is. Okay. But the point is, is that, and I'll just say it, uh, it was said to me, you didn't have any experts out there. And I took, I took a little bit of offense to that at first, and then I thought about it. 
We do tend to because of the specialties that we have in the Arabian industry and in, in our horses, let's face it. When I started with this thing, you could judge Western pleasure, you could judge English pleasure, and you could judge hunter pleasure, and you might see the same horse. That doesn't happen anymore. It just doesn't happen. We are specialized. And therefore, it felt like that people wanted to see specialized people in that particular realm. Uh, my submission to you is, is that that part of it is, is what we train. That's what we do all year long. Uh, do I think, and I'll just make an example of this, do I think Jim Hitt can judge an English pleasure horse? Yes, but he's, he could be labeled as a, just, a, just a working Western person. But does Michael Damianos, can he judge a halter horse? Yes, he can. He judged nationals a few years ago. Okay? And so I'm trying to, in, instead of pigeonholing people and what they can do or not do, is let them, let them and their expertise go through. And I think it worked very well. I'm, I'll, I will tell you this, Mary Smith and Ron Harden and I are working right now to do some analytics and put them together as far as consistency and analytical consistency. And I'll give my kudos to Nancy. She told me to use that term. Um, that'll be $150. That'll be $150. I got it. <laughs> that, that I think we, we can look at those things and try to, try to determine what's going on with somebody. But it's always the same question. I'm not here to defend judges, but I am here to say to you that they are trying. And I thought, Annie, this morning, I didn't pay her to do that. But, uh, but I will tell you this, uh, they are always trying to be better. We're trying to get better. And I think these analytical consistencies will, will help us because when there's a first, first, ninth, I want to know. I talk to people about that. I ask the judges about that. Okay, I want to find out what's going on. But guess what? The first, first, ninth may have been that the guy blew up on the far end with a wrong lead and he just he bumped him to ninth. A lot of things take place there. Again, that's the kind of things that we're looking for. The other thing that I want to talk about a little bit is social media. <laughs> you know, you got to have a thick skin to run this job as it is, but I don't make $250,000 a year and have a jet waiting out at the airport, I can tell you that. <laughs> I guess the thing that bothers me more than anything is that, quite frankly, and I'll just say it, the lies and the mistruths that are said about people, judges, horses, do nothing but destroy us as far as negativity. <coughs> negativity. I don't think that, and this is the biggest challenge of my office, Pat and I both, all of us on the EEC, is to take a hold of that, understand what's taking place with that, USCF is trying to come across with those things now to uh, fines and those kind of things. But all of us out here, and I'll just say this, and it's a little bit, again, here we go off script. Those people that are talking to us on the, in the negativity, are they here? No. Are they part of the solution? No. And so I, I constantly want to be able to say that. You know, a judge stands out in that ring, a steward stands out in that ring, and makes decisions that affect a lot of different things. They're trying to do the right thing. They are trying to do the right thing. Do they always get it right? No, they don't, nor do I, nor do, nor do any of you, but they are trying. So that's one of the things that we'll be looking at in the fall, in the year to come. I will say this, uh, the school is coming up in December. Uh, it's in Scottsdale this year. We still have some openings. Uh, if you want to attend it, I can't speak strongly enough. I've told you guys before, if you're an exhibitor, I think, and you want to get better, this is the place to come. If you're wanting to be a judge, this is one of the things you have to go through. It's extremely intensive, but it teaches you a lot about yourself, what you want to try to do, what you want to try to come across is with your horses. The seminar, again, also will be, and this will be the last year that it will be in Scottsdale. Next year, I will go to the CBC with uh, Daryl Bilkey and his group, and the only reason I'm doing that is, quite frankly, I think it's a cost-cutting uh, with, with what we're trying to do, and I can bring different instructors in to show to these, as far as ranch riding, sh horse showmanship, 
all those kind of things, just new faces to get new looks to learn and educate them a little bit better. It's not that, believe me guys, we got some really good people that educate this, the EEC. But I do think that we all have to have fresh looks. So in closing, I, I appreciate it. I, I thought this morning Annie was really good and it is an honor to be a judge. And I'll just say this, and I did this two years ago. All of you that have been a judge or a steward, now or before, please stand up. Oh, that makes me shorter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These people deserve a hand. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> As you can see, they're here and they're a big part of our community. But uh, I uh, appreciate the whole year. I'm going to continue to try to keep doing my job the best that I can, and I will be around as always. Thank you very much.